one, and we are live with Little Shop Live. And for our first thing, I'm going to go ahead and stand up here. And, and, and we're doing this thing on physics of the body, and we were doing a bunch of different ex experiments, kind of like on, with, with people's bodies. And, we had some things that didn't go quite as planned. Um, we always have surprises in the episodes, and and Ty in particular. Ty, I'm, I'm feeling, I'm feeling, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I mean, we, 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 we worked hard. We tried some things. Some things worked out a little bit differently than planned, and I'm really sorry about that. How are you feeling? <laughs> Feeling pretty small, but I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm really, so I'm really, I'm really, really sorry about that. And I think okay. we're, this is hopefully reversible. Hopefully, you're gonna be by the time you get ready for a big Thanksgiving dinner next week, you're gonna be full size, be able to load up your plate. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> is it hard taking classes like that? Do people think like you Almost shouldn't be here? You're a kindergartner. <laughs> stepped on, you know? Almost like, got stepped on, don't no, we? Yeah, they're like, like, what are you doing here? <laughs> I was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> that is awesome. And this is another illusion that we are doing in the Little Shop of Physics live studio. And we're gonna demonstrate exactly how we make this go. So we are gonna slowly kind of like reverse the illusion. And you can see, in fact, if we come in close, oh. Ty is in fact normal size. Yay. Normal. <laughs> a giant hamster. <laughs> but as a giant, giant hamster, <laughs> which is kind of awesome. And I'm going to say, let's go ahead and recreate the illusion. So we'll show you how you do this. So I've got two, we have two, two little stuffed hamsters, and they're exactly the same, but they're different sizes. And then what Ty does is Ty moves backwards. I move forwards until the hamsters are the same size, and then Ty gets down down on her knees and holds the hamster up a little bit and your brain interprets this for some reason as a little mini tie and a giant Brian. Little tie, giant bry, which is kind of <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and this works because the background that we have is very, very plain. And this is something you can do. This is just a regular camcorder. And if you have a place with a really simple background, you can do it outside as well. Um, and we have a couple of different ways to produce this particular illusion. But now if we reverse it, tie stands up. And then Brian moves backwards. Then we yeah. can, you can see we're we're both regular <laughs> size, which is kind of awesome. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to put tie in my pocket. <laughs> Maybe next time. <laughs> and that brings us to our first segment, which is on vision, and that is an interesting visual illusion. And how it works has to do with how your eyes work. But Casey is going to show us something very fundamental with how your eyes work. And Casey built a little eyeball model. It looks like over there. I did. Yeah, so what I took actually was just an old jack-o'-lantern since, you know, October's through. We did our trick-or-treating. Done with that. Could make an eyeball out of it. I put this big old lens in the front here, and then on the back you can see I just have kind of a sort of screen, so you could make this at home too. And if this is like my real eye, it's like the lens in front. Lens in front. This is what you would call your retina oh. inside your eye in the back. And then if we have a light source over there and Patrick looks through the back of the eye. Sorry, let me move it. So Patrick is looking at basically the retina. So this is what the eyeball is seeing. And it's seeing Cecilia, but Cecilia's... I'm upside down. Upside down. Upside yeah, down. The little Patrick. heart light is there. There we which go. is clearly upside down, and Cecilia is upside down. Oh, yeah. Do the little heart thing with your hand again. That was <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so really, in your eye every day, you're seeing everything upside down like this, but your brain is so kind that it flips everything the right way up for you once again. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Thanks, Brain. Thank so you, kind. Brain. <laughs> 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 which is awesome. And now... Ty is going to show us another thing with, with your eyes. And this is yeah. something that I had never tried until we did this for the program, so I'm pretty excited about it. All right, so what you're going to do is you're going to make a triangle with your hands, and then you're going to put it straight out and have, focus on a far image and have it centered on that image. Okay. Brian's my image. All right. Case is mine. <laughs> awesome. And then so you're going to slowly bring that triangle back to your face, and eventually it's going to land on an eye. And that is your dominant eye. Oh my gosh. So I am, I am left eyed, which is kind of awesome. I'm right handed. <laughs> I'm right handed, but when I do this and I bring it back, 
on my left eye too. I am wow. left eyed. Left and I, I assumed I would be right eyed because this is my dominant hand, <laughs> but this is my dominant eye. That's crazy. And it's my dominant leg too. So everybody try that right now. And, and let's see, put your hand out there. You're looking at a distant object. I'm looking at Patrick's camera. And then I just bring it in and I'm gonna keep the camera centered. Whoa, and then the eye that ends up over, that is my dominant eye, and so I am oh, strongly no. <laughs> left eye dominant, even though I am right hand dominant. Who knew? Not me. My left eye is my worst eye. That's the one where you need the most vision correction. <laughs> <laughs> now, other animals have other features of their eyes, and I think Casey's going to get ready, and I'm going to bring Barrington out to join us, because we haven't had Barrington in here yet today. <laughs> so, if you're ever out on a walk, or if you're driving in, or your parents or your adult is driving their car, and you see the lights reflect from that into some eyeballs, and you see some spooky eyes in the distance, what's actually happening is a lot of animals have this thing on their eyes or within their eyes called their tapetum eyes. Um, and what it does is it reflects that light immediately back to you um, but you can only really see it directly in the line of that light so if I hold this bike light this reflective bike light at Barrington right now I'm seeing his eyes reflect back at me but if Patrick shows it from his angle, you can't really see it. He's not see seeing it. it, but then when he comes in right at the right angle, oh my gosh, there's like flashing demon eye Barrington. Very yeah. spooky. <laughs> Barrington. He's going to need an exorcism later, but it's... Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, there's demon eye Barrington. Oh there yeah, that's good right there. There it is, there it is. <laughs> And actual bears have a tapetum in the back of their eyeballs. And so you see this light that reflects exactly back where it came from. And we made this by putting little pieces of fabric on here. And this is the retro reflective fabric that you would use on vests. And so it's intended for a car's headlights hit it and it reflects the light right back toward the car. And the tapetum works like that. And it basically comes into the eye, hits the retina, hits the tapetum and goes back for another pass to the retina. And the animals that have the tapetum are ones that tend to be really, really sensitive to light. So the ones that hunt at night, oh. which is awesome. So cats and dogs and my favorite, alligators. <laughs> <laughs> alligators. And, and, and? Barrington's. And Barrington. <laughs> sorry, 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 Barrington. I didn't mean to imply that you are anything less than my favorite. Okay, don't worry. Don't worry, bud. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about, we talked about your eyes and your vision. Now we're going to talk about your voice and your hearing. And here's an interesting thing to know. You make sounds with your vocal cords, which are in your throat. When they make sound, it's just two pieces of tissue flapping against each other. And the way they sound is basically like this. Yeah, it sounds like something else a little bit. <laughs> but when it goes through the tube of your vocal tract, we get different, it sounds a little bit more musical. And I get a bit of a pitch out of that. Excuse you, Brian. <laughs> 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 and so the, sh the sound from your vocal cords is shaped by your whole vocal tract. And other things work like this. Mm -hmm. mm, one of the things that definitely works that way is musical instruments, especially instruments like the trumpet. The trumpet's awesome. So Casey's got a little trumpet over there. We'll wait Cecilia till... Cecilia does too. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I tell you, I'm going to get this. Your name Cecilia. <laughs> <laughs> Cecilia's got a trumpet mouthpiece. And were you a trumpet player back in the day? Yeah, I played trumpet for seven years. Wow. Oh. Continuously, or did you sleep somewhere in there? I hope so. <laughs> I think I slept. When she snored, she just had her trumpet. <laughs> yeah. So a lot like how um, Brian's balloon example showed us, the mouthpiece works the same way as your vocal cords do. So this time, instead of the balloon making the fart noises, your lips are going to make the fart noises, and you're going to buzz. And when you put it on your lips, and it goes through the mouthpiece, it makes a cool little sound like this. You ready? And that's nice, although a little quiet. Can we make it louder? Yeah. Yes. Oh, and what else could we use? How about that big old trumpet you got yeah. there? Because I do not have enough air to make this loud enough for everyone to hear. So I'm going to use my handy dandy trumpet. You ready? So ready. <laughs> Oh yeah, and that's a little that's a little bit louder. 
<laughs> and so that noise gets turned into something that's very musical, but also, too, the shape of the bell. Go ahead and hold up. Cecilia holds that up, and there's a bell. And the point of the bell is it helps connect the sound that Cecilia was making with her lips into a, a sound wave in the air. And Casey's got, oh, yes. <laughs> it's, always, it's like a bell for your face. It's only fair that... I get to yell right back at you, Cecilia. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and br bring it on. Brian, what did you Whoa. say? Oh, <laughs> and that makes you what? like that makes you crazy loud. It makes you able to make a lot more sound. It does. It does. Yeah, it's just spreading out that sound from my lips in a wider area, right? Is that right? It is, and and it, it <laughs> enables you to move more air and therefore <laughs> produce more sound. Makes Casey louder. Call me Big Mouth. <laughs> 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 and people with big mouths can actually speak louder, which is kind of awesome. Or we have another thing that we can do. And now we're going to go over to Ms. Babcock's class, and we're going to zoom them in. And we have a special, and there you are, this Ms. Babcock's class. Everybody waving at the camera. Awesome. Good to see you. We got a job for you. We got a job for you. When you yell through your mouth and you want to make it louder, you can cup your hands, and actually you can make it a little louder like this. But we're going to ask you to yell not through your hands, not through your mouth, but through your nose. <laughs> and your nose is a much tinier opening. So we want everyone to scream as loud as you can with your mouth closed. You're screaming through your nose. Let's hear it. Oh, come on. You can scream louder than that. <laughs> this is nothing. This is ridiculous. I can't hear them. I think I'm going to need some help. <laughs> And when you're yelling through that tiny opening, you just don't get enough coupling to the air. You just don't, aren't able to get enough volume. Let's have a hand for Ms. Babcock's class. Well done. Well done. And we've been talking about how you make sound. Next piece, we're going to talk about how you, how you sense sound. <laughs> <laughs> we all have these special ears on over here. And I see this changes the way I perceive the world here. It kind of like, one, I hear a lot more of the high pitches, which is kind of awesome. Huh. But then, two, it makes me very directional. I can listen to just Casey or just Cecilia or just Ty. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right now, I think I'm hearing a little bit too much of Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Take these off. You, you want to trade? <laughs> <laughs> I think, we all have different ears. Mine is, mine is a, a, I think, a bat. It's a long-eared bat, and so I, I'm going to have hearing like that. And it changes the way I perceive the world. And Casey, which one is yours? I have no. What does it look like? If you tip your head down, we can read it. It is a. Well, no, yours is the long-eared bat. bat. Sorry. Oh. Sorry. What is mine? I am a. Goodness, I'll have to look and see. I'm a long-eared jerboa. Sorry. Jerboa? <laughs> jerboa. Of Little, course. <laughs> of course. And then Ty is an I-I. Ty-I-I. Ty-I-I. Uh, tie, I, I. Uh, tie, I, I. <laughs> and then Cecilia's so cool. a leopard gecko. You just have little tiny holes in the side of your head. And does that change the way you hear? Yeah, I can't hear very well at all. <laughs> you all sound very nasally. <laughs> but if you want to do something like this and change the way you hear the world, you don't need a fancy piece of equipment like that. You can just cup your hands over your ears like this. And if you do that, Casey's going to explain what we're going to do next with this. What is, what is Ms. Babcock's class going to do? Casey's going to explain? I, I thought I oh, had you down okay. for that. Yeah, she sure is. So <laughs> if you guys put your hands over your ears like Brian was just showing you, it's kind of going to mimic those ears we just had on our heads. Um, and I believe Sherry is going to go to a spot in the room. If you guys close your eyes... And you have to point to where you think she is when she's talking. Does that sound good? Or she's using a speaker. A speaker. Sorry. I don't know. She's using a speaker. She says yes. Sorry. Whatever. Sorry. <laughs> so. All right, so everyone's standing up. And they're okay. putting on their bad ears. Bad ears engaged. Bad ears engaged. And they're closing their eyes. All right. Oh, and they're looking around, the, and they're all facing in the same direction. I think they're finding the source of sound. I think they are succeeding. This makes your ears way more directional. Looks like a whole class full of bats That's in a there. whole class full of bats. <laughs> <laughs> Look at them turning to the sound. 
Amazing. Who needs fancy oh, ears? They got it. They got it. They're pointing. They found it, those rascals. They found exactly <laughs> where it was. And they did that by using their bat ears. Awesome. Ms. Babcock's class, thank you. Let's have a hand for them. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And then t other teachers who are joining, we are looking for people to join Little Shop of Physics Live on future installments. We're going to have our next the day before winter break. We have one right before fall break, and we'd love to join a class. So get in touch with us if you would like to have your class be featured on the next installment. One more thing we want to do with sound and hearing and speech, and Cecilia's got this one. Cecilia, what do you got going on over there? Alrighty. So I have a little fan here. And the way that your vocal cords work is you have air that you you breathe in air and the air vibrates in your little voice box, right? Well, what happens when the air is forced into your uh, voice box? Well, let's find out. I'm going to take a fan. This is going to be interesting, so <laughs> give me a second. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. So I'm going to take off the mask and I'm going to turn my fan on and we're going to see what happens to my voice when I push air into my throat. You ready? All righty. How does uh -huh. that sound, guys? Oh, that sounds bizarre. <laughs> that sounds bizarre. <laughs> yeah. It's not just air, Cecilia. but it's, it's choppy uh. air. Keep talking, Cecilia. Well, um, what happens is when you have so much air that's being forced into your voice box, it makes things a little weird, especially when you're trying to push air out, because that's how you make sense. And sound. if you scoot your face down just a little bit, I think you're getting an yeah, even There like you that. go, right there. Oh, yeah. All righty, yeah. <laughs> Give us a little whistle. <laughs> Wow. Oh, yeah. Awesome, so awesome. The whistle is even better. <laughs> and the laugh. <laughs> <laughs> and the laugh is awesome. And this is something anybody can try. This is something kids can try at home for sure. The talking through a fan. Oh, yeah. Awesome. I definitely did this when I was four or five years old. Awesome, oh, yeah. awesome. All the time. <laughs> Next piece we want to look at is we have a little lie detector. And I see our friends from Norway are on. And Magna is on from Norway and hopefully his compatriots from Norway. This is something we got from our buddies in Norway and they gave it these little kits where you can build a lie detector and the lie detector is basically passing a small current through your body. And then if you have less resistance, you get a different pitch. And Ty, show us what we got here. All right. So Oh, oh goodness, go ahead and pick those yeah, go ahead and pick <laughs> those things up. All right. Ooh. There are metal rods connected to these wires that are connected to the machine. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, everyone. <laughs> but um, <laughs> that's all right. It's all right. It's for science. Ty, are you getting are you getting nervous over and there? I think a little bit. The pitch is gonna go up if we can make Ty nervous. I think we asked Ty some questions to make her nervous. <laughs> Ty, when is the last time you skipped a class? Never. Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> I hear that pitch going up. And her hands are sweating, and with sweats. They are sweating. <laughs> you all make me nervous. Let me show you one more thing we can oh, do with please. this. If I take one and you take one, oh, yeah. check this out. Whoa. We can make a little circuit, and we can see how nervous the two of us are. <laughs> You could use nervous. this with kids to see, like, you're holding hands. How nervous does that make you? <laughs> that is awesome. And this is from our friends in Norway who are chiming in. So thank you for that shout out to our Nordic compatriots who do the science circus. Oh, now we have another thing where we're going to look at uh, electricity in your body. And it turns out you're a pretty good electrical conductor. And it ch your electrical conductivity changes with how sweaty you are. But also, too, your muscles actually make electrical signals. And Ty's got a little box over here, so it's back over to I Ty. Do. All right. So here, I'm gonna, we're going to listen to some of my muscles. Awesome. So you're putting this on your wrist. Yes. What do you mean, listening to muscles? <laughs> oh, <laughs> muscles. <laughs> All right. So. And I think you want a little salt water. I'm going to yeah. get a little container right there. Oh, thank you. You're so awesome. great. Awesome. Awesome. All right, I'm going to set this here, and I'm going to turn her on. Oh, let's crank up the volume a little bit. Oh, there oh. it is. Oh, yeah. Let's try it again. <laughs> Squeeze them tight. Squeeze them tight. And let them go. Squeeze them tight. Oh, oh. yeah. So what's happening? Why is it? Yeah. Why can I hear that? Brian? So what's happening is when Ty is squeezing her muscles like that, when they contract, they make little electrical signals. And you know this. You've seen this with people's hearts. You can do an electrocardiogram. But in this case, this is just the sound 
of the electrical signals from Time's Muscles. That is awesome. You're getting the great kind of like two finger workout there. Yeah, yeah. And, in progress. <laughs> and Cecilia has got something that she made for the show that Ooh. uses the fact that we're all connected. And I think Ty is going to bring that little. Yes, I am. So there we go. Alrighty. So what I did was I connected that speaker over there to a little audio jack that goes into my own phone, right? And then there's two little rods. One that Ty's holding, one that, I, that I'm holding. I think there's two wires coming out of the phone, right? There are. And one wire goes right to the speaker. Yep, and one goes to this one that's right here in my hand. So I'm gonna try and play some music, all right? Um, we gotta fix that though. <laughs> what do I do? Push the thing in. I think it's good. You're just gonna you're gonna oh, yeah. get a little bit of a buzz. That's okay. No, that's, that's okay. <laughs> wow, that's fun. Um, that's not working. Give you're not getting you're not getting any sound because we didn't make a complete circuit yet. Oh, no. so uh -huh. let's try and make a circuit. So Ty, I want you to hold Brian's hand. Brian. All right. And then Brian and Casey, I want you two to. Uh oh, we up. need to have a way to connect the, between <laughs> Brian and Casey. We Ready? got a little. No. There we Ready? go. Oh. We're right. making a wire between Brian and Casey, and we connect like this. And the music is spasming out because the audio jack is weird. But let's try this. Oh, yeah. That's it. There we go. Oh, yeah. I love this song. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then what happens, Brian, when you let go of Ty's hand? Nothing. Oh, no. Bring the music. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'm going to let go of Casey's hand. What? Whoa. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Much better. Oh, yeah. Uh, we could just oh, that is awesome. listen to music like this all the time. And we are oh, yeah. literally connect, conducting that through our bodies. So it's just <laughs> two wires coming out of the jack from the phone. One goes directly to the speaker. The other goes through us. And we've done this through a room of 25 people before. And it turns out it's a low enough voltage. It goes right through you. It doesn't hurt you. don't feel a thing except for the urge to move in time with the beat, <laughs> which always happens with music. We are good to go. Next thing we want to do is show you a little bit about the mechanics of how your body is put together. And Cecilia's got right. something everybody can try right now. So everybody, follow Cecilia. Alrighty, everyone. So I'm going to show you something that, that always freaks Casey out, so I love doing it. <laughs> so I want, you, <laughs> I want you guys to take your fingers and make sure they're flat. And then it's different for everyone. But yeah, flat and kind of relaxed, though, right? Yeah, flat and relaxed. You don't want them stiff like this or else it's not going to work. Okay. But there's these things called tendons, and they're basically cables that connect your fingers to the muscles in your arm. And when you push down on those tendons, you shorten them. And here is what happens when you shorten those tendons. Well, and you're not using your muscles to yeah, do that. Not at all. <laughs> she was right. Whoa, so you're actually, like, pulling on the cables that pull oh, yeah. on your fingers. Yeah, and some for some people it works really well on the wrist. For other people like Brian, it works really well when you press right in the middle of your forearm. Oh yeah. For me this is working great. I'm pushing on this cable here and I can feel that cable and you all can see my arm is moving. That's not using my muscle, that's my hand that's doing that. Yeah. Wow. And so I'm basically, I'm pulling the strings. I'm, I'm playing my hand like a puppet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The first time we showed this to Casey, she freaked out. So I don't know. Something about it being, I don't know, <laughs> it just gets me. And you're like in an anatomy class, Casey. Yeah. I, it's something about it being our own bodies, like a living bodies. Mm. I get it. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> and then Casey's got a one of, another one of her little hamsters. This one is Bijou. Glad that Bijou could join us and Bijou is connected to a little spring but this is a special spring right yeah so this is something we call knit and all wire um, and how it works is you stretch it out like this but once you heat it up it's gonna want to return to its original shape um, which I will show you what that is using this fancy little heat gun I just have her attached to this so I don't burn my hand <laughs> so heating up the wire Takes it a second to warm up. And go on high. Let's let's go for it. Oh, sorry. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> sorry, there we Whoa. go. Oh, yeah. Look at look at that. It's shrinking. Shrinking up on us. That's awesome. And this is sometimes, oh, keep it going. I say keep oh, it going, yeah, yeah. Casey. Definitely. Keep it going. Of course. We're going to get you off the ground here. And so this is sometimes called muscle wire. Muscle wire. And, and Casey, why is that an appropriate name? 
It's an appropriate name because in our body and a lot of our muscle groups, oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have muscles that work in pairs, right? So your muscles can only function by shortening or what we call contracting. Oh, just like that spring. You, it, just like this spring. It shortens, it can't push, it can can't only pull. Push. Just like in your arm, you have muscles on this side that flex it for you, and then you have muscles on this side that extend it for you. We had a little shop member that made this snazzy guy for us a long time ago, or I don't know how long, but a bit ago. Three years ago. Three years ago. <laughs> this is Bo, by the way, if Bo is joining us. <laughs> oh, Hi, Bo. cool. Hi, Bo. <laughs> um, and if I show you those muscles in your arm, we have some of that. Well, something similar to that wire in here. Oh, there it goes. It's Whoa. moving its arm. Flexing. And, and it's, it's pulling these muscles or springs here. And if I press for them to extend, you'll see that these muscles, the springs, in the back of the arm are going to start shortening slowly but surely. I'm oh, yeah, there, a it nudge. Goes. there it goes. There it goes. Just a little. Just a little. It just has to warm up is all. Yeah, we'll give it time. Yeah, same deal with the leg. Flex, maybe? So if we flex, oh yeah, there, there it goes. We go. There we go. <laughs> Flexing. That's the, your front, the front of your leg muscles working hard, and now the back of the leg muscles. Nice. And now we're extending. And so your muscles are always in pairs because they can only shorten. So you need one to flex and one to extend. Yeah. Which is very awesome. And also in your, in your eyes, you've got circuitry that works like that too. You have pairs of neurons. They're basically looking for different kinds of signals. And one looks for things getting bigger and one looks for things getting smaller and they work in pairs. Here's a little illusion we want everybody to do. So tie colored in this this disc oh yes yeah. this is awesome and so we're going to look at the center of the disc and then ty is going to spin it and we're going to stare at the center for 30 seconds stare right at that bolt as ty spins it and to make sure it's 30 seconds we're going to sing happy birthday to barrington casey kick us off <laughs> happy birthday to barrington and keep staring happy at the center keep staring at the center barrington, barrington. Happy, happy birthday dear barrington, barrington. Happy birthday to you. And keep staring, Again. keep staring, keep staring. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to Barrington. Happy birthday, dear Barrington. Happy birthday to you. Now stare at your hand. Whoa! I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. Let's do one more round of that illusion. Uh oh, got it. Oh, yeah. We're going to have to sing this time. We're just going to do it for a while. Right in the center, everybody stare at the disc. And what you're doing is, when Ty turns it, you can see that spiral appears to be going out. And so the little circuitry that senses things getting bigger is getting tired. And the one that is sensing things getting smaller is staying nice and fresh. Oh. And they work against each other. And if they're reporting the same signal, then it'll look like everything's staying the same size. But if they're reporting different sizes, it's going to be different. And uh, keep it cranking, Ty. Keep, keep it going. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Did it get stuck? <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, we're going to do it the other There we go. Let's do it the other way. Yeah, if you can crank it that way, that would be awesome. Keep doing that. This is now shrinking. The one that's sensing things getting smaller is getting tired. The one that's sensing things getting bigger is just taking a rest. Oh. So stare at it. We're going to stare at it for a good 15 seconds more, and then everyone's going to stare at the palm of your hand, and the palm of your hand will appear to grow. And if you want, you can also stare at someone else's face and make their face look like it's expanding. <laughs> okay, right now, stare at your hand. Whoa, <laughs> growing hand. Oh. Awesome, 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 <laughs> awesome. And now we're going to do one more thing with their muscles, and this is something that Casey showed us. Yeah, so everyone can actually try this right now. I'm going to go ahead and stand. I think we all stand. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> so what you're going to do is I want you to grab the side of your pants. You're going to grab on, onto them real tight because you're going to pull them out as hard as you can, but you don't want to let go. And we're going to do this for another round of happy birthday. Pull as hard, hard as, you, as can. you can. Hard as you can. Hard as you can. Happy birthday to Barrington. Happy birthday to Barrington. Happy birthday, dear Barrington. Happy birthday to you. Now let go. 
and relax your arms. Oh my arms. gosh, my hands are rising up. <laughs> oh my Whoa. God. Rise up. <laughs> that is awesome. Like I'm not doing that. My muscles are just doing this for me. That is awesome. <laughs> so what's happening is after flexing your muscles for so long on your own free will, eventually they start to just flex it on their own, assuming that that's what you're going to be doing. And once you let go, it just raises them up. Oh my gosh, that is <laughs> awesome. And that is a perfect grand finale. This was something everybody could work along with all the different things that we're doing. Be back with us in four weeks on December 17th, right before your winter break in Poudre School District. We'll have another round of experiments for you. In the meantime, keep doing awesome science. Keep in touch with us. Thank you so much to Tiffany Babcock's class. Yay! Yay! And thank you to all the other classes who joined. Everybody have a great fall break, and we'll see you in a couple weeks. Bye! Bye-bye.